Hey y'all, this is Sarah Mariana. First video on YouTube. I decided to bring my talents from Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, retail to YouTube because, I mean, I like making videos, I like talking, and I like drinking coffee. And if you speak Spanish, el próximo video va a ser en español. So today I wanted to start off a look that matches my nails. This is a smoky eye look inspired by my nails done by Mad Nails. They're located in New Orleans, Louisiana, which is where I am from. They're super awesome and they're featured on TNT's Claws. Anyway, so if you want to see what kind of blending I did on my eyes, I am self-taught, so chances are if you're following along with my tutorial, you'll probably do a better job than me. Also, I'm excited to just have fun on YouTube, like be out of focus, be in focus, mess up on editing, mess up on audio, mess up on everything, because I'm really good at that. So... Let's get started with the Tati Beauty palette and do the smoky eye look. <laughs> I'm going to start off the tutorial by doing my brows. I'm using the Urban Decay brow blade that I just got. For the longest time, I've been wanting to look for a brow definer that featured a felt tip. And this one is super thin. It also has a retractable pen. So I like to warm up the product on my arm Look, it broke off. Trace it with the pencil, fill it in with the felt tip. I love this color. This is the Universal Taupe. And I have brows that are more of a taupe ash color, but I have blonde hair. So this is the perfect color for me. Normally, I have to do a lot of blending of different hues to find the right one. Now that I have my brows done, I'm going to go in with a primer, Soft Ochre Pro Longwear Paint Pot. A oldie but a goodie, traditional. It covers all kinds of veins and it also highlights the brow bone. With the primer, I like to go all the way into the inner corner and pass where normally the eyelash or wing liner would be. And keep on blending. I like to have enough space to play around with. We can eventually blend that all away with foundation and powder once I start doing the rest of my face. For the smoky eye look for today, I'll be using all one palette, Tati Beauty. If you ever want to wear eyeshadow on a daily basis, create smoky eye looks, I recommend just getting one palette. And one of my favorites, it is Tati, aside from Jeffree Star, Dose of Colors, and Too Faced. Now, the first question you should be asking yourself is whether I should set my eyes or not. I would say if you're a professional at blending, you don't really need to set your eyes because you know how to maneuver the product and the brush. For me personally, I'm a beginner and I feel that having that powder makes it really easy for me to blend similar textures aside from the fact that I have hooded eyes. Hooded eyes tend to crease a lot and because I want my smoky eye look to be seamless, I want to make it as blendful, as awesome, and as cohesive as possible. So I'll be setting my eye with Aura and this is the Aura in the matte shade. Now I'll start to create my transitions. So I'll be using, I think, the whole bottom matte row. Because I am self-taught, I feel more comfortable using different kinds of brushes to achieve the look. This is just some of my brushes. Here's more. I'll be using them all as I feel comfortable if some spots need to be filled in more than the others. So let's start off with a blending brush using the Soothe in Matte. And I'll be 
keeping the color above my crease line and also not going into the inner corner as much. Because a smoky eye look can overtake the eye, me having hooded eyes, I wanna concentrate the colors on the outer corner and building an easy and thin transition closer to my inner corner. That way my eyes are more open. You can actually see all the transition colors. I'm going into circular motion, starting off from the outside, working my way in, grabbing product little by little as I feel comfortable. I'm using the mirror, looking down, but then I'm also fixing the mirror and looking straight to make sure that you can actually see the color and it's not being covered by the crease or being placed in the area that you don't want to. So here I'm gonna grab a different blending brush. This one is from Olimar Cosmetics and I'll be using the color Story, which is a warm orange and just blending it in under Soothe Bring in a little bit of color to the crease. And right now I'm still blending above the crease. Now I'm gonna grab my third blending brush, grabbing the color Ritual, which is the chocolate brown. I wanna apply that chocolate brown to my crease. And I also want to showcase the color on my lid. So I'll be tapping off the product. First, applying it on the crease, blending it in. It should look like a shadow, and then moving it down. Same circular motions, just making sure the product is applied on the crease and a little bit on the lid. The blending brushes that I've been using are of a similar shape. The difference being that the first blending brush that I used was a little bit more fluffy, whereas the last two blending brushes are tapered. This one being the most tapered, making it easy for me to follow my crease and to apply the product easily. Now that I have all the colors that I wanna use for the transition, I'm gonna look back at the mirror See what colors are being hidden by others, which ones I wanna highlight. And depending on what kind of smoky eye look you're going for, if you want something more cat eye or more rounded. So now this is the perfect time to be looking at the transition colors. I see that for me, I may want a little bit more orange in the middle transition. On the other side, I may want a little bit more chocolate in the middle section going into the inner corner. For the inner corner, because it's going to be closer to the lid, I'm really um, just blending it in pretty easily in the inner corner. Not being afraid of how, how much pigment is on there since it'll be covered later on by the color black. Um, so yeah, so let's grab all the three brushes and adjust the transition to how you would like for the smoky eye to look before applying the scariest color ever. I say scariest color. It's not scary to use black. It is extremely intimidating. I'll be using memory, but since we did all the work on the transition, if you mess up on the lid, I probably will personally. Um, it's a really easy fix. You just keep on blending until everything looks smooth. So that is the reason why transition colors are so important. I feel that if you have just gone with memory and worked your way up, it would have been a lot more harder to get the placement of the pigment where you want it. Whereas we have built on to the crease and it's easy to fix mistakes. I'm grabbing my Urban Decay brush from the Electric palette, which was one of my favorite Urban Decay palettes. <sighs> I mean, it's just black shadow. I don't know why I'm breathing so much. Okay, I'm gonna apply it. Here it goes. I'm 
I'm just patting it on. Because I have hooded eyes and I'm taking the other end of the Urban Decay brush. This is just a very thin tapered packing brush. And I'll be working my inner corner with that memory color. As I was blending all of the transition and lit colors, I thought that it would be a really good idea to use the color Poet in between the Ritual and Memory. So there's a pop of color on the lower transition. It's a minute difference, but I think this Poet color does make the last transition color look closer to the chocolate on my nails. Now that I've blended almost everything, I'm grabbing my cellar water, cleaning underneath my eyes where all that fallout is, and then starting off with my face makeup. For primers, I'll be going in with two. One is hydrating, one is meant to fill in those pores. Glossier Priming Moisturizer will be the one that I'll be using on most of my face. The Porefressional is the one that I'll be using on my cheeks. I'll also be using on my smile lines. And then I do have some areas that wrinkle pretty easily above my brows. So I'll be filling in all those areas with that primer. Then I'll be going in with the e.l.f. Hydrating Concealer. This is the Camo Concealer. It's a lot more of a peachy undertone, so it's going to be great to cancel out those acne scars, acne spots, and any other spots or dark areas that I want to neutralize before applying foundation. I'm just going to be at my house. Had I been going to work or going out, I would have gone in before all the primer with a sunscreen. My favorite one being the Neutrogena Hydro Boost. Because I'm just staying indoors, I'm just going to be blending, taking photos, and hopefully be trying out the new Beauty Blender uh, sunscreen. It supposedly also helps with blue light, so I'm excited to give that one a try as well. I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear, one of the best foundations out in the market, whether that's drugstore, high level, high end luxury. It's just a very good foundation that blends in with the skin, natural finish, great for any sort of skin tone. And my shade is 425. Y si hablan español también, voy a hacer videos en español y mi próximo video va a ser de mi base favorita para piel oliva. Así que si quieren escuchar mi chistecito, tomar el café, hablar de maquillaje, estén pendientes porque lo voy a grabar bastante pronto. Y pronto digo que después de, <laughs> de grabar este video. Now that I have foundation on, I'm going to be going with two Maybelline products, the Maybelline Fit Me Setting Powder the Instant Age Rewind Eraser. The color is in Neutralizer. For the powder, I believe, yes, Tan Fair Light. It's great for the under eye area. Aside from those two products, I'll also be going in with the Physicians Formula Natural Defense Finishing Powder. This is just a great powder if you want something more seamless with a satin finish for all over the face instead of going in with the Fit Me Powder for any area that creases pretty easily. I like to pack the finishing powder. Once I feel confident that it's all over my skin, then that's when I go around and swirl my brush around all the areas where I set that Maybelline Fit Me powder for it to blend seamlessly and just have a hint of a satin finish look. I'm going to go in with another Physicians Formula product. This is the Butter Bronzer. It smells really good. It's a really great finish. They have made it into darker hues, not dark enough for all skin types. So I definitely recommend using, mm, which one is one of my favorite? Ooh, 
Anastasia, completely underrated. Great contour products. And if you use the contour shade, mixing it with the warmest contour shade, it's a great bronzer tone. One of my beauty secrets is that I shave all the way up to above or just at my ear to make all of my powders and foundations blend easily and look natural in camera or in photos. Taking that butter bronzer, it looks good. And then I'll be using some blush, some highlight, Flower Beauty. And this is Soeva. And then we'll be finishing our eye look. I don't want to go too far down with my smoky eye look for the waterline area. So what I'll be doing is instead of using the memory eyeshadow, I'll be lining my waterline with the Marc Jacobs gel liner in black, then using the color Poet and Ritual with a pencil brush and all kinds of skinny brushes to create a transition look and put on some mascara. Whenever it comes to waterlining, especially I have dry eyes and I'm wearing contacts, I'm doing it little by little closing my eyes, blinking. Cause that way, if there's any sort of eyeshadow eyeliner that gets onto your makeup, it's easier and faster to clean than just to go all ham in there and then having to redo your makeup. Now I'm gonna go in with the angle liner brush, grabbing Poet. And just following where the smoky eye look ended tracing it, getting closer as I get to my inner corner. And by closer, I mean closer to the waterline and lash line. And grabbing some more if you need more pigment. And we are zoomed out and this is my final look. Here are my nails matching my smoky eyes. To finish up, I used the Dominique Cosmetics Lemonade and I used the Maybelline Lipstick in shade 144 Naked Dare. But I'm excited about all these colors. I love this palette. I highly recommend it. It has a great mirror too, but I think that really diffusing the color and sticking closer to the waterline when it comes to the transition colors on the bottom really helped my eyes open up because I'm not wearing falsies. So for mascara, in case you're wondering, I'm trying out different ones. The currently, well, the one I'm currently using is Snapscara. And then, yeah, I think this looks cool. I could even, like, I have a hat here, hold on. I could probably wear a hat. It looks super cool. <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited about this look. I mean, it's great for my first video. First of all, thanks for watching, sticking with me. I hope you learned some more tricks. I hope you follow me along. Make sure to subscribe. Any of my skincare details, skincare products, what I use on a daily basis, go follow me on Instagram, at SarahMarianaSG, and you'll learn more about that. And then I'll see you on the next video.